Hello, brothers and sisters. My name is Jim Gao. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about uh, something that um, I brushed on yesterday's video. I remember yesterday I talked about um, the Easter service that I attended this weekend and how I realized more than ever that church is a business and only a business. I want to touch the deeper reason for this. And I think it's the church planters, it's their original intention to make church a business. They were never into spreading the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, bringing people in communion with Jesus, lead people to the throne of the living God. Their intention, many of them, from the beginning is entrepreneurship, is to make a profit, to earn a living. And it all derives from people's insecurity of lack of money. When you think about what is the true religion of this world, I would argue it's not Christianity, it's not Islam, it's not Buddhism, it's not Judaism. The true religion of this world is money. Money is the true religion of this world because it satisfies what I think the two requirements for faith, which is once you acquire this stuff, you, you believe that it's going to solve all your problems. And second, in order to acquire this, you're willing to die for it. So a true believer of Jesus Christ, they don't believe money is going to solve their problems. They believe that Jesus Christ is the solution for their life's problems. And they're willing, they're willing to die for Jesus Christ, if required. But when you ask most Christians even, and especially you know, the people who are in the church, to them, money is their solution. Because they're always worried about money. They worry that where their, you know, their next paycheck is going to come from, how they're going to make ends meet, how they're going to afford their tuition, their rent. They don't realize that money is only a tool. It's not, it's not the end, it's the means to an end. But we have made money into the solution of everything. I know certainly it's the true, in my case, I used to worry a lot about money until four years ago. I stopped worrying about where my next paycheck is gonna come from. And I'm a living testament of how God provides. I personally have not had a job for the past four years, no steady income for the past four years. But God has been providing for me miraculously. I was never in lack materialistically. And uh, last, check, last paycheck I got was April 2015, exactly four years ago. Since then, there was no steady income, but God has been providing for me, not only for me, but also providing for the people around me, materially, you know, pro providing money to them through me. How did that happen? I'm not, I'm not saying this to brag, but I'm saying this as a testimony to show you that I'm a living example of how God provides miraculously. Now, He's not giving me, you know, I'm not living in my own house. I don't have my own place to stay. But I'm never in lack. I have all the things I need to eat. I have never worried about what clothes I'm going to wear. You know, I never worry about the, you know, any materialistic things because God has been providing for me faithfully for the past four years. And you ask, how could that be possible? If you're spending more than your income, that's not sustainable. And I know that's, that's exactly the point. I don't know how is that, that possible. It's a miracle. It's a miracle that God has done through my life. Um, same thing you can ask, how was it possible that Jesus Christ provided food for thousands of people with only two fish and a few pieces of bread? It's a miracle because our God, Jesus Christ, is a God of miracles. And he told us not to worry about the future. If there's one thing that Jesus told, told us in the Sermon of Mount is that don't worry. Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear. And the example he gives is that look at the birds in the sky. They don't have to worry about what to eat. They don't sow. They don't reap. But they never go starve. 
Look at the wild flowers in the wilderness. They never have to wear, worry what they're going to wear. But even Solomon, in his most glorious days, cannot even match the wardrobe, the, uh, the appearance of a flower. So his point is that if God can take care of a flower, a bird, imagine you being the children of God, how much more will be taken care of by Father in heaven. And that's exactly what we need to do. We, we shouldn't worry about money. But if you look, ask the church, if you search for church planting on YouTube, if you see the theme that, that they all have in common is that how we find funding for our operation. You know, they probably use euphemisms like, you know, different ways of, you know, asking for support, asking for offering, for donation. They're always having their hands out, asking some people to provide, provide for them. They're begging. They're beggars for money. We, if, if we are true Christians, if we are truly believers of Jesus Christ, we're supposed to be royalty. Royalties, we don't beg for money. Beggars do beg for money. No, if we need money, we don't need to back, beg anyone around us. We go into our praying closet, shut the door and beg our Father in heaven to provide for us. If we don't have any material things in our lives, if we don't have any, any, any food ar around us, if we're going starving, don't worry. Just go pray to God saying, help me, Lord, and wait for him to work miracles in your life. Because our God is a faithful God. He is going to come through for us. Just like He has come through for me over the past four years. Over and over again. Today I come to you truly unworried about money. To me, money is only a tool. If God wants me to accomplish a mission and it needs a lot of money, then I'll know that He's going to provide it for me. And I know that if God wants you to serve Him, He's going to provide for you as well, for sure. Those people who have to beg people for money, you can just know that their calling is not from God. It's from their own selfish ambitions. So flee from these people. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. And they don't believe in Jesus Christ. They're not serving Him. They're not part of king, uh, the, the kingdom of God. They are building their own kingdom in this temporal earth. So flee from them and pray to Jesus. Don't let anyone lead you. Only let Jesus lead you. Get to know him. Get to know him in prayer. May God bless you.